What up guys, it's your boy Ali and welcome to Hip Hop Forever. 1998 was a great year for hip hop. Jay-Z released volume 2 Hard Knock Life. The album came in at number 1 on the Billboard 200 and sold 350,000 copies in the first week. Hard Knock Life turned Jay-Z into a household name. He started doing more shows, he was making more television appearances, and as a result Jay-Z became a boss. Now Jay wasn't the only rapper making moves. In the same year DMX released his first two studio albums. It's Dark and Hell is Hot came in at number one on the Billboard 200 and sold 251,000 copies in the first week. And his second album Flesh of My Flesh, Blood of My Blood sold 670,000 copies in the first week and came in at number one on the Billboard 200. In 1999 Ja Rule released his first studio album album called Veni Veni Vici. The album came in at number 3 on the Billboard 200 and sold 185,000 copies in the first week. At the time, Ja, X and J was signed to different labels. J represented Rockefeller, X was a Def Jam artist and Ja was the flagship artist at Murder Inc. However, before Ja Rule's first studio album was released, Irv brought all three artists together to form a super group called Murder Inc. Now before Murder Inc. was created, Irv was managing an artist called Mike Geranimo and they dropped an album called The Natural in 1995. The project wasn't a commercial success, it failed to garner a lot of attention, but one track that stood out to the fans was a track called Time to Build featuring Jay-Z, a then unknown DMX, and another artist called Ja Rule. Immediately, the chemistry between the three artists was organic, X's delivery was aggressive and his lyrics were brash, Jay had that cool flow, and Ja was a hungry New York artist that rhymed like he had a point to prove. Each artist had something to bring to the table, and luckily for the fans, this wasn't the first and only time the trio collaborated. In 1998, JX and Ja Rule officially teamed up as Moda Inc. for the first time and appeared on a track called Modogram. Look me in the eyes with the nine and spark Cause whether you're for or against this When I spit with murderous intentions Everybody goes, everybody knows The track was dirty, grimy, and it was a guaranteed head knocker As always, each artist did their thing on the track And as a result, the fans couldn't wait to hear what Murder Inc. was about to drop next Loose collaborations between the artists started to drop Ja Rule and Jay appeared on Can I Get A Can I get a hoop, 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 from all of my pictures who don't got love when it gets without and Killer Ma, X and J appeared on a track called Blackout. I'm headed nowhere fast, running in place, uh, getting my way. And Money Cash Hose. Other tracks surfaced and they were all bangers. However, the only other time the trio collaborated again was in a track called It's Murder in 1999. They got my back against the building. I'm the villain that's creeping around corners. Like shorty, if you see them niggas creeping around corners. By the end of the 90s, the supergroup was no more. Irv turned the group's name into Murder Inc. Records, and the rest is history. One can only imagine what XJ and Ja would have accomplished if they released a studio album. So the question is, what happened to Murder Inc? Now back then, Ja knew that bringing together three of the dopest lyricists in the game was genius. Each artist was unique and wanted to be better than the next. On paper, the group album seemed like a good idea. However, as we all know, the album didn't materialize. Ja believes ego ruined the group. More specifically, J thought he was better than X and X thought he was better than J. And as a result, X and J became so competitive that they couldn't be in the same room together. I think we was all bringing something different to the table and we could have given hip hop something special. When you try to put something like that together, you're dealing with a lot of egos and a lot of outsiders putting the bug in people's ear. That's what got the best of the situation. A lot of egos. Not me per se, because I was kinda new and just coming up. But X and J, they had exploded on the scene by that time. And it was a lot of egos in the way. Really to tell you the truth, I'm putting it in a nice way, but they didn't fuck with each other at all. X and J didn't fuck with each other at all. It was hard getting them in a room together. To the world, Ja, X and J were on the cusp of dropping a good album. However, internally, X and J just couldn't seem to get along. So the question is, how did the tension between the two artists begin? According to Irv, the tension between Ja and X began before they blew up. Around 1994, J and X had a battle in New York. At the time, DMX was a battle rapper and he was known for winning most of his encounters. 
His content was aggressive and his delivery followed suit. As far as rap battling goes, X was the man. However, after he battled Jay-Z and the battle resulted in a tie, X began to resent Jay. Jay and X didn't like each other at all. It was always competitive. X hated Jay because it was the one battle that he said it wasn't absolutely sure in everybody's mind that he won. As far as the winner of the battle goes, most people seem to think that it ended in a tie. However, DMX might disagree. Right, right. Put it like this. I ain't never lost a battle. I'm a battle rapper. I'm a battle rapper. I ain't never lost a battle. Ain't, ain't, ain't a motherfucker breathing. Ever say they wrapped me up in a battle. Ever. Ever. Can't be serious. I personally... I started off battle. My first rap was a battle. What? Nigga, my first one. The first thing I wrote was a battle round. Come on, son. I, I do this for a different reason. Now the battle between X and J reminds me of an old video I saw on YouTube. During J's Hard Knock Life tour, X, J, and the security guard got to freestyle backstage. J dropped the verse first, and it wasn't bad. He rapped about his life in his usual J way. Fuck what they all say. Niggas can't stop me with rumors. I'm pretty strong. It was cool, but in my opinion, X's verse that followed was a lot more passionate and hard. Put niggas in the wind, but you never see niggas again. I bless a nigga with stitches with thin tight, and a straight face will put pinstripes across your wind. Like. <laughs> Now if I were a betting man, and this video is anything to go by, then I think X probably won the battle that took place in the early 90s. X's delivery is blunt, it's in your face, and it's brash. And in my opinion, those are some of the key characteristics of a dope battle MC. Now an interesting interaction between Jay and X occurred in 1995. When collaborating on Time to Build, Jay wanted to close the song. At the time, rappers were competitive, they would compete for the last verse on a song because going last usually meant that their verse was better than everyone else's. After hearing X's verse, Irv thought DMX deserved to go last. However, much to his surprise, Jay got offended. Jay asked Irv if he thought DMX was better than him because evidently, he thought he deserved to go last. Jay didn't like the response he got from Irv, so he decided to direct most of his verse at DMX. My first experience was Jay, the Mike Geranimo record. And Jay is pissed off because I let X, who has done his verse already, go last. He's like, you want X to close? At that point in hip hop, whoever closed was the guy. So I'm like, I like his energy. I said, yo, I like his energy. Jay goes, yo, stop the music. You think he's better than me? Clearly, the tension between Jay and X was there before they formed Murder Inc. And in my opinion, there's another reason why DMX had a problem with Jay. It appears DMX thinks he makes better music than Jay because Jay's music lacks soul or heart. Now if you've listened to any one of Jay-Z's songs, it'll become clear that stunting is a core part of his message. Jay usually raps about buying things that the average person can't afford. It's braggadocious, it's ostentatious, but it worked for Jay. And his success is the reason why many rappers today tried to emulate his blueprint. In DMX's opinion, Jay's music lacks soul. X believes Jay doesn't make meaningful music because Jay is motivated by cash money. New York to AZ. New York to AZ must be crazy. Jay-Z, you heard? You heard? What do y'all think is the state of the rap industry right now? I mean, you know, I'm an artist, so I kind of have biased views. But I think most of these suck. I think they not only suck, but they suck. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. We are real people. Most of us got jobs. But you got these talking about Bentleys, mansions, and pool parties. We don't rock that shit, son. So my take on it is, you got Patron in your cup? Good for you. You got a bitch that wanna fuck? Good for you. You sitting on 24s? Good for you. You got Lamborghini doors? Good for you. Because at the end of the day, I ain't got that shit. Jay is a talented m Don't misunderstand me. He is talented but he has no heart behind it. There's no soul behind it. It's motivated by money. Now DMX does have a point here. I don't believe Jay's music lacks soul, but I do believe that it's motivated by cash money. Jay said it himself. I dumb down for my audience, double my dollars. They criticize me for it, yet they all yell holla. Jay chose making money over being lyrical. 
He figured out he would make more money if he made his songs more commercial and that worked for him. Clearly Jay knew what he was doing because look where he is today. However, Jay's desire to let the money influence his music wasn't respected by everyone in hip hop, DMX included. Now according to DMX, his issues with Jay-Z aren't personal. He considers Jay to be a worthy adversary, like Goku and Vegeta, their relationship is based on competition. Each artist wanted to be better than the other and competition is normal in hip hop, however this time it got in the way of a potentially good album. Now it was easy for Jay and DMX to walk away from Murder Inc. At the time Jay and X were two of the biggest artists in the game, they both had at least two solo projects out and their fan base was still growing. On the other hand, Ja was still a new artist. When Murder Inc disbanded, Murder Inc Records wasn't there yet and Ja was still on the come up. So in essence, Irv and Ja Rule had the most to gain from a group situation, while X and J knew that they would be better off by themselves. As stated earlier, Irv created Murder Inc Records after the group ended, the company became a success, Ja became one of the biggest artists in the world, stars like Ashanti and Lloyd were created, Murder Inc became a powerhouse. However, one can't help but wonder what state the game would be in today if J, X and Ja Rule dropped their debut album. I don't always do the right thing, but I ask you to forgive me. That's it for me, man. It's your boy Ali. What happened to Murder Inc. in your opinion? Let me know down below. Also, I've noticed that a lot of you guys are requesting a Vita video from Murder Inc. So I'll be dropping that next week. Be sure to let me know if you have any video requests. And that's it, man. Peace.